In this video, you can see how a Ukrainian tank destroys enemy fortified positions in once peaceful houses. The enemy is entrenched in the buildings on the edge of the city of Bakhmut, and the tank is working directly on these positions. It is interesting that the tank came close to the enemy positions, and the enemy cannot hit the Ukrainian tank. Apparently, they don't have anti-tank missiles here. The Russians are also trying to storm Ukrainian positions with tanks and armored vehicles. The main task of the tank is to destroy the enemy stronghold, so that the infantry can move and take up positions. This is a classic situation in this war, something that happens every day. But thanks to American Javelin missiles and British Enla, Ukrainians easily destroy Russian tanks. The Javelin man-portable anti-tank missile system can be called the tank killer in the Ukrainian war. With their help, hundreds of tanks were destroyed and continue to be destroyed to this day. When a Ukrainian infantryman has a javelin in his hands, he is not afraid of any tank. It only takes a few seconds to lock onto a target, and one second to press the start button. Further, the javelin missile will cope with the target itself. Not a single tank can withstand a hit by this missile. Look how beautifully he destroys Russian tanks. Sometimes, the tank's turret flies up to tens of meters in height, and the tank is torn to pieces by the detonation of shells. Great footage for a Hollywood action movie. The Ukrainian army uses its tanks only when absolutely necessary, saving them for counteroffensive operations. Tanks are needed to break through enemy defenses. On defense, they are not so useful. Therefore, Ukrainian troops meet Russian tanks on the battlefield with javelin missiles. They are cheaper than a tank and more effective in defense. Tanks can be ambushed and easily destroyed. The cost of one javelin is approximately $100,000, while the cost of a T-72 tank is at least $3 million. Favorable exchange for Ukraine. Russian tanks have no way to defend against javelins or n -laws. Here's a good example of how a tank's reactive armor turns out to be useless. A javelin missile hits a moving Russian tank on the battlefield. The dynamic protection worked, but despite this, the tank was damaged and caught fire. The tank driver continued to move to hide behind the trees, but soon he had to run away, leaving the tank, which later exploded from the detonation of ammunition. The anti-cumulative grills do not help the tanks either. Before the invasion of Ukraine, the Russians equipped almost all of their tanks with such grills and fixed them above the tower. They hoped that the bars would somehow neutralize the effect of Javelin or Enlaw missiles, which hit the tank with cumulative jets. But these grills also turned out to be useless. The internet is full of photos of destroyed tanks with grills above the tower. Not only tanks, but any armored vehicles can be easily destroyed by the Javelin missile. Here is a soldier of the Ukrainian army destroying a Russian armored personnel carrier from an ambush, being at close range. Very nice hit. But here is another case, also a hit from an ambush. Near Ugledar, Russian tanks hit the mined roads. A lot of armored vehicles were destroyed by mines. The New York Times called it the most disastrous Russian tank operation of the entire war. More than 150 units of various armored vehicles were destroyed. In the next video, we will tell you how Ukrainian soldiers mined the roads. So subscribe to our channel! The main approaches to the city of Ugladar were mined. A lot of armored vehicles were also destroyed by artillery, drones, and javelin missiles. After that, the Russians sent forward a special mine clearing vehicle, the UR-77 meteorites, but this machine was hit, most likely by a javelin missile from an ambush, and then it caught fire and exploded. UR-77 carries special ammunition, which detonated. The explosion was very spectacular. This machine uses ammo that creates enhanced shock waves. Look, as an example, at the work of this machine in Mariupol last year. A special projectile is thrown to the desired distance and creates a strong shock wave. From strong pressure, all mines in this area explode. After that, infantry and armored vehicles can move freely there. But in our case, 
Ukrainian soldiers somehow hit this vehicle before it even had time to do its job. And another attempt at the Russian offensive failed again. There are already well-known video footage from Mariupol, where supposedly a Javelin missile cannot hit a Russian T-72 tank. This case has already been discussed by many military experts. First, to be precise, this is not a Javelin, but an Enlam missile. Secondly, the rocket was launched from too close a distance, so it turned out to be ineffective. The minimum effective distance of an Enlam missile is over 100 meters, but when the target is too close, the missile's warhead does not activate. This is done primarily for the safety of the one who launches the rocket. This means that any weapon must be used correctly. In this case, it would be more appropriate to use the Soviet RPG-7 anti-tank grenade launcher. When used correctly, the Javelin is guaranteed to destroy any Russian tank, as seen in these well-known video footage. The Javelin inflicts terrible damage on tanks, turning them into scrap metal. Such tanks are no longer subject to restoration. Sometimes, tanks are completely torn to pieces. According to some statements by the Ukrainian military, the Javelin can even be used to destroy low-flying helicopters. We have one such accident recorded on video. Unfortunately, we cannot confirm that it was a Javelin missile. It is impossible to understand which missile shot down the helicopter. We know that the Ukrainian army uses more suitable weapons for this purpose, such as the British Starstreak and the American Stinger. Ukrainians also use the Soviet SA-18 Grouse Complex. You can see him in action in this video. But we also know that the Ukrainian military is very resourceful, and therefore it is not surprising if they shoot down helicopters with a Javelin missile. At the very beginning of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Javelin missiles played a decisive role. It is good that the Western Allies managed to put them up even before the invasion. Then, the Russians advanced to Kyiv in long columns, and the Ukrainian soldiers destroyed these columns from an ambush. The Russians lost hundreds and hundreds of units from various military armored vehicles. They were forced to recognize the Javelin missile system as an ingenious military invention due to its effectiveness and ease of use. The Javelin system consists of two components, the missile and the launch unit. The missile is a fire and forget weapon that uses an imaging infrared seeker to track and engage the targets. The complex is equipped with a display screen and a joystick that allow the operator to guide the missile to the target. The Javelin missile has a range of up to 2.5 kilometers and can penetrate up to 600 millimeters of armor. It is designed to engage both stationary and moving targets, including those in urban environments. The missile can be fired from a variety of positions, including from the prone position or from behind cover. Let me remind you that the Russians still have nothing to compare. If you liked today's episode and you would like me to continue to make such releases in the future, then you can support my channel by becoming its sponsor and donate a small amount. To do this, click the appropriate button under this video. I will be grateful and encouraged to keep making new videos.